Did you know that the average Australian household spends over $60,000 on electricity bills over 25 years? And with prices going up at around 16% each year, this is only certain to get even higher. Well, today I'm joined by Jason Micklejohn from Isolair and also Robert Wiggers from Solar Green, who are going to talk to us about some of the solar solutions that you can be looking at home or in the office to help keep these energy bills down. So let's start by talking to Jason to find out as to whether a few simple changes really will make that much of a difference. Typically, most home uh, power bills are 30 to 50 percent associated with heating and cooling. So from an air conditioning point of view, if you can save 30 to 50 percent compared to a comparable inverter system, you're going to save a lot of money off the power bill. Okay, now tell me then, I'm just going to flip this on. What are, some <laughs> what are some of the big energy guzzlers that we should uh, be watching out for around the home? Well, uh, the old window rattler is definitely one that uh, can get rid of straight away. <laughs> the split system, uh, particularly our system, it's a split system solar air conditioner. Mm -hmm. It'll save 30 to 50 percent of energy consumption compared to an inverter system. So, in, is this in, inverter? No, this okay. is not. So you'd be looking at more like the 70 percent mark compared to this. So there's a massive energy savings you can make if you got rid of these sorts of systems. And if you're curious to know how one of these compares to an energy efficient solar one, Jason explains. Way out system works is that we uh, preheat the refrigerant before it gets to the compressor and therefore reduce the amount of work that the system has to actually do to air condition the room. So as a result, whether because it works on ambient temperature, uh, it'll work during the day or night, it doesn't matter. As for the dinosaur, I was rather embarrassed at how much I would save with an Isolair solar replacement. You'd be around the 70% mark because this would be three kilowatt, three and a half kilowatt mm -hmm. system. So you're looking at uh, every hour consuming something in the order of 1,500, 1,800 kilowatts. Uh, sorry, watts, sorry. <laughs> yeah, watts, yeah. So it's quite a, a large amount, whereas our system on average would consume, once it hits um, stable, probably about 600 watts. So you, you, right. you're a lot less. It's clear a solar air conditioner is the way to go when things heat up. But what about hot water and the other big energy guzzlers around the home? I decided to find out from Robert what else I should consider when it comes to solar. All right, you have solar power, which is photovoltaics, solar water systems, which heat your water, right, for you know free and free hot water from the sun. Um, we have um, solar air conditioning, which you heard a little bit about mm -hmm. earlier. Um, things to help you save your power on your pool. Um, so everything, when you put it together, right, um, helps you with your energy costs within the home to reduce your power bill right down, which is one of the biggest things that most homeowners and businesses mm. have to face, right, is their energy bills. And the good news is that for families wanting to drastically cut their energy bills, or possibly even never pay one again by going solar, cost is no longer a barrier. Solar power as such has certainly come down quite a lot in the last three years um, there, and th there's a couple of reasons for that um, because of the uptake of solar in Australia um, you know there's more coming into Australia which has made it more competitive to buy the US dollar exchange rate so solar has become far more affordable. For an average family considering going solar to power some of the big energy drainers I wanted to know how much of an investment in solar power this might require. Gen generally most homes, if you just looked at their energy bill only, would need somewhere between a four to five kilowatt solar power system to help them reduce their energy bill right down. But you can do more than just installing some solar panels to make the savings even greater and even add value to your property. You could go for a smaller solar panel system and complement it with other solutions such as a solar roof ventilator, solar air conditioning, pool power savers, hot water systems and more. In fact, Robert was confident I could get my energy bills down to zero by having a solar green energy audit and installing a couple of the products around the place that they recommend. And fortunately, they're all relatively easy to install as well. Of course, not for me. I'm going to leave that to the professionals. The Isolair solar air conditioner, for example, is best placed where you can get the most heat from the sun, although it is designed to operate between a range of minus 7 and 53 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, so it will work day and night. It looks just like your normal split system, except with a collector placed next to the outdoor unit, so it heats the refrigerant before it gets to the compressor, making this system 30-50% to 50 more efficient than a comparable inverter system. 
The best news is the competitive price. Basically our systems, we've intentionally priced them competitively against a comparable Mitsubishi or Daikin system. So although it's cheaper to run by 30 to 50%, uh, you're not paying a premium for it. And more particularly, we're the first uh, air conditioning company to actually achieve carbon accreditation. So mm -hmm. in addition to it being uh, competitively priced, uh, you're also getting a rebate, which um, you know is always great to put money back in uh, the uh, homeowner's pocket. There's certainly a lot happening at home to help us reduce our CO2 emissions and save money in the process. But according to Jason, there's also a lot more happening at the wider community level. He believes that the opportunity now exists for all businesses and councils to significantly reduce their power bills by using microturbines. By decentralising power generation and producing power where it is needed, it can save a lot in the transmission losses and lengthen the life of the existing poles, wires and power plants. He also says technology to turn waste into energy exists and councils can harness environmentally unfriendly waste streams such as tyres, carpet, oil and other municipal waste to produce energy. ICELEA can assist councils with the commissioning of this technology and have it operational within five months. By doing this, we reduce landfill demands and we don't continue to rob the earth of its precious resources. So as you can see, there are certainly a lot of solutions out there to help us reduce our CO2 emissions, both at the wider community level and as individuals. If you would like to find out how you can introduce solar to your home or in the office, visit isolair.com or solargreen.net.au. Thanks for joining us today on Eco TV.